I thought I'd set up my camera and just film myself painting this sweet little still life of roses from my garden for you. I have the camera over my right shoulder because I wanted you to be able to see the setup as I was painting it. I do a lot of these little time lapse um, for our site inspiredtopaint.com and for my students. If you haven't visited inspiredtopaint.com please do so. We've got lots of free videos that you can watch. We've got three membership options, free, basic, and all access. In the all access pass you get concept lessons, full length tutorials where the videos are in real time, dialogue, palette shots, everything. Right now I'm just trying to simplify my light and shadow pattern. You notice I kind of masked in the roses with a dark color first and now I'm adding lights the light shape and when I create a light shape it creates the dark shape for me. And the white roses I used Indian yellow to mass in uh, just a thin layer of Indian yellow and then I came back with just pure white on top of that. And Indian yellow is so strong that when you um, put white on top of that it turns just a really beautiful warm white and it helps the white roses feel more translucent and more alive. I'm painting this under a cool light, which means that I'm going to have warm shadows. And flowers need to have some warmth. If, the, if you have too many cool or dull notes in flowers, then they tend to look artificial and, and not alive. So these are Munstead Wood Roses from my garden. They are beautiful David Austin variety, and I masked those in with pure alizarin crimson. And now, uh, for the light, I added a white to the alizarin crimson. I'm trying to keep the color pretty clean for these particular roses because the colors are so intense. So I'm making sure I don't get any background color or green in those uh, alizarins. The background colors that I use a lot are ivory black, yellow ochre, and alizarin crimson. Between those three, which are basically primaries, ivory black leans to a blue, so I have a red, yellow, and blue. I can make a, uh, a number of different colors. Um, if I have more black and yellow ochre, I will have more of a greenish background. If I have more black and alizarin, I'll have more of a burgundy. More alizarin and yellow ochre, I'll have more brown. So I'm going back and, and adding some more refinement to the roses and, and the leaf shapes right now. I do try and simplify what I see when I squint down if I while I'm painting roses or petals if I squint and I see two separate petals then I'll paint them as two petals but if I squint down and two petals become one shape then I paint them as one shape. I like to say I paint a poem and not a novel. So I am trying to simplify things. So now I'm taking the background and carving in around the leaf shapes, keeping it the background darker up at the top and gradually getting a little bit lighter as it moves towards the foreground. I use Viridian and Cad Cadmium Yellow Medium in Gamblin uh, for some green mixes, varying those by adding yellow ochre, some white, or even some alizarin to it. If you go to inspiredtopaint.com or my website elizabethrobbinsart.com, I do have a video on all of the paints and brushes materials that I use, the type of canvases I use, so you can go and watch those free videos on either of those sites. So we're refining more of the petals in the white rose. I'm using a Royal Sable Tech brush in the 95510 series 
This is probably a size 14 that I'm using, and I do sell brushes on the Inspired to Paint site. So if you go to that website, click Shop, Brushes, you can buy a set of brushes that I use. I'm painting the, um, this beautiful little vase. It was my mother's, but you notice all the different the different temperatures, the different colors that I'm using to create the vase. I've got a cool light. It kind of swings to a little bit more warmer tone in the half tone. A little cooler note right before it turns into the shadow and then it warms back up a little bit into the shadow. A cool light, which is what I use to light this setup, means that I'll have warm shadows. A warm light will mean cool shadows. It's a balance in nature, a yin-yang, a light and warm and cool when it comes to light balance. And I do blend quite a bit more on vases than I do on roses or leaves just to get that beautiful glazed look. This little bud that I'm painting now I actually took out in the final version um, it just, it was not adding anything to the final painting. It actually kind of de dis, uh, detracted a bit from the roses in the vase, so I, I end up wiping it off. You can't see the little cup off to the uh, setup there, but on the right, but that's what I'm painting right now. So there's a little tiny cup. I'm using now a, a hog bristle filbert to do the foreground. And I'm trying to keep the outer edges close to the canvas a little bit darker while the light will be concentrated just near the vase so that your eye kind of stays within the composition, doesn't take you off the page, off the canvas. So I've switched the camera over so you can see the colors a little bit better, but I do think it was important for you to be able to see the setup for a bit while I was painting. These are just little petals that have fell, fallen onto the tabletop, which I love to paint. They also help, they're also a directional tool. I can put them to help lead your eye somewhere in the painting. I'm using straight French ultramarine for this part of the vase. And I'm using the paint dry with no medium in it. And then I come back and with a soft, clean brush and just kind of soften those edges. A few touch-ups on some leaves. And so this was the finished painting. You can see I took out that, took out that bottom bud because I didn't think it helped. But I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you were inspired to paint.